official visitors. Let's uh, move to members' statements. The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I had the opportunity last week to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Steelway Building Systems in Elmer. Steelway is a family-owned business created by the late Glenn White and his wife Pat. Today, their sons uh, Jason and Brian run the company. Steelway employs 200 people in their Elmer facility and to date have built over 4,400 buildings throughout Ontario. The company's success comes the fact that Steelway operates in the same core values as Glenn yeah. that he instilled on his business. Commitment to employees and a culture built around integrity, family and community. The company has truly embraced community. In addition to supporting the United Way, Heart Stroke Foundation, the East Elgin Community Complex, the East Elgin Secondary School, Steelway has been a firm supporter of the St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital. Year after year, the business contributes in the hospital in numerous ways, from building uh, buying colonoscopes, patient care equipment, to assisting with the current expansion of the hospital. The employees at Steelway also contribute to our community, donating to East Elgin Christmas Care, St. Thomas Care and Cupboard, and the Elmer Corner Cupboard Food Bank. Mr. Speaker, we are proud of the work and support delivered to our community by Jason Bryan and all the employees at Steelway. And just give me a few seconds. I just want to quote something from the corporate book. Mr. Speaker, it all started with a heritage of private entrepreneurship, community involvement, and their father, Glenn White's lifelong passion to building things. They continue the story to this day, and we wish them all the best. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today on behalf of the people of Hamilton Mountain, who have yet to be given any substantial relief for the rising energy costs from this Liberal government. With the catastrophic and reckless sale of Hydro One looming, I think most Ontarians are wondering just who's the, who this Liberal government stands for. Certainly, they're not concerned with the families that have been calling my constituency office in desperate need of help. In my riding, one family with a child who has a complex medical condition requires life-saving energy use. They need a, a use of an oxygen tank, a feeding pump, constant use of air conditioning for a respiratory condition, and many, many other medical supports that use excessive amounts of energy. Over the past two months, this family's hydro bill has doubled by over, uh, to over $1,100. Thanks to the work of my constituency staff, last week this family found a bit of relief from our local utility company. But this does absolutely nothing to get them back the thousands of dollars that they have spent on life-saving energy expenditures and the emotional and financial strain that they have experienced. And it does nothing to save them from the inevitable rising costs of hydro that they have yet to face. This Liberal government needs to start caring about the challenges that Ontario families are facing today and stop the sale of Hydro One. Thank you. Well, thank you, Speaker. Um, thank you very much for, for acknowledging my birthday. I saw you mutter under your breath. It's my birthday. And, and I want to talk a little bit about something not community related but related more to me individually. I had a chance this summer to do something extraordinary as a Canadian. I'm very proud to be an Ontarian living in this incredible country, and I took an opportunity to go to the Arctic with my 28-year-old daughter. We flew into Greenland, took a beautiful boat, the Ocean Endeavour, down to the longest fjord in the, in the world, up the coast of Greenland, stopping in at some small Greenland communities, meeting with the native people, meeting with the local, uh, and, and looking at what they do and how they survive there. And then across the Davis Strait, north of Bath and Island, up near Ellesmere Island. It was the most extraordinary trip on board a boat organized by a group called Adventure Canada. There were at least a dozen scientists, biologists, marine biologists, botanists, archaeologists, historians. And we got lessons almost every single day. We got to look at where we were, what we saw, and what we saw was stupendous, Speaker. We saw icebergs like you'd never imagine. We had, in a big boat, maneuver our way around these huge sheets of ice because never before had they ever seen this many ice flows in this area breaking off the face of glaciers in the north. It was absolutely extraordinary. I met, I met an explorer named Jerry Kobolenko, who's personally sledded over 20,000 miles across the Arctic over the last 20 years, a modern-day explorer. And we got to the top of a mountain where Franklin last put a marker, and that was, what, three weeks before they discovered the terror. So this is an adventure. I encourage every one of you to go see the Arctic and you get a chance. It's an extraordinary place, and it'll make you proud to be a Canadian. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Earlier this summer, a resident of Prince Edward Hastings and a very good friend of mine climbed 
Mount Kilimanjaro. So let me put this, Mr. Speaker, into a, a bit of context for you. On November 30th of 1992, almost 24 years ago, John Cairns was assembling a freight train at a rail yard here in Toronto. It was a typical day on the job, much like today, a big blue sky day. That was until a 68-ton railway car backed over top of him. He lost his right arm, he lost his right leg, and he spent a week or more on life support. He'll tell you that he should have died that day, but he didn't. He'll tell you there were many days during his rehabilitation that he wished he had died, but he didn't. And now the local motivational speaker and philanthropist is focused on inspiring others to the fullest, something he's been doing for years in the Quinney region, across the province, across the country, and now around the world. Last September, John swam across the Bay of Quinty, which is a pretty solid feat for a guy who's a double amputee. This spring, he danced in the Dancing with the Stars Quinty competition, finishing second. His partner, Lisa Vance, was a big part of that. But this past summer, he continued to defy the odds, climbing the tallest mountain in Africa. Following the Kilimanjaro climb, he, wanted to, he said he wanted to give up on the first day. He says, quote, I reached numerous extremes of sheer exhaustion, pushed the physical, mental, and psychological human boundaries that resembled a place where I was fighting for my life 24 years ago. He's also caught the attention of Canada's Walk of Fame, Mr. Speaker. Cairns is going to be receiving the 2016 Peter Somalius Philanthropic Unsung Hero Award at the Walk of Fame ceremonies next month. Congratulations, John Cairns, for all your accomplishments, and thank you for being such a tremendous inspiration to all of us. Thank you. Great member statements. The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, the other day, a doctor from Japan, uh, Masanori Hanada, gave a media conference here at Queen's Park along with Chief Simon Bobister of the Grassy Narrows Band. Dr. Hanada reported that in the recent research he'd done at Grassy Narrows First Nation and at the Wabasimung First Nation, 90% of the people were contaminated with mercury, showed signs of mercury poisoning. Speaker, he noted that young people, people who had not been born when mercury was dumped into the English Wabagoon River system, were showing signs of mercury poisoning. Speaker, that alone is shameful enough. But, Speaker, earlier this year, this government said it was allocating $300,000 to do immediate work on assessment to pave the way for remediation. My colleague, Franz Jelena from Nickel Belt, asked the Minister of Indigenous Affairs the other day about how much had been spent. Not a single word from that minister about what has been spent. I've heard rumours that almost nothing has been spent, that a year of research has been lost. And the government, which talked so much about reconciliation and respect for First Nations, won't even answer a question as to what they've spent on money they committed for immediate action. That, Speaker, is shameful. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. Canada has been blessed with the contributions of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community as our friends, our neighbours and our co-workers for 50 years. This week, the members of the Ahmadiyya community celebrated 50 years of building our families, our communities and our country at Mississauga City Hall. For many of those 50 years, I've been fortunate to call members of the community my personal friends. The Ahmadiyya community is based in Pakistan, where its members often have a difficult time with discrimination against them. I was honoured to be the Master of Ceremonies at the anniversary celebration at Mississauga City Hall and to try a few sentences of my best Urdu. Ahmadiyya National President Mr. Lal Khan Malik spoke to the gathering of about 300 people, followed by the head of the Mississauga Jamaat, Mr. Saeed Asan Gardizi. We were joined by Mississauga Mayor Bonnie Crombie and most of the Mississauga City Council. O Canada was sung by a group of children recently arrived from Syria. A representative of the newly arrived Syrian community spoke for a few minutes in Arabic about his community's challenges, about their gratitude to Canadians, and about their gratitude to their Ahmadiyya Muslim sponsors. It was, Speaker, a celebration of what makes Canada unique in this world, and I was proud to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stavis, the member from Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. The residents of Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry have built welcoming generous, caring communities throughout their lifetimes. Recently, this spirit was recognized with the awarding of the prestigious Sovereign Volunteer Medal 
to two remarkable people in my riding, Ernie Spiller and Sean Adams. Ernie, a Second World War veteran, has been a tireless advocate for preserving local historical sites as well as being a keen member of community organizations such as the uh, Hortus Cultural Society, the Heart and Stroke Foundation, and the Glengarry Fencibles. At 92, his volunteer activities show no sign of slowing down. His, he is an inspiration to our community and a driven achiever. His latest project is the Sir John Johnson Manor House rest Restoration Project, a precious national historical site in Williamstown. Sean Adams is a familiar name and face to Cornwall and the residents of Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry. He is a dedicated, tireless supporter of key local institutions, such as the Children's Treatment Centre, the United Way of SCNG, and our local hospital, and the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Sean's dedicated, hard work has been tirelessly aimed at preserving and improving our ability to be healthy and happy. On behalf of the residents of Stormont and Des in South Glengarry, I want to thank Ernie and Sean for their dedication to our people and to our communities. These gentlemen exemplify the community spirit that, exempl that exemplifies my riding in Stormont and Des in South Glengarry and are an inspiration to all. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member Simmons, the member from Tomiskamy Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. This week, members of the Legislature had a great opportunity to go to the IPM in Minto, and I'd like to once again congratulate the volunteers who put that show on. It was a great show, and I know how much, how much it takes. It takes about three to four years to put on something like that. We're only there for a few hours, and that's why I'd like to invite the people of uh, Ontario, and certainly I hope the members reserve the third week of September in 2019 when the plowing match will be in West Nipissing. That's in my riding. So I, I think you should take a couple more days. We should maybe take the whole week off to go there. Because there you will also get the Franco-Ontarians. It's great to talk about because they have a very heavy Franco-Ontarian influence. And I, I'm sure you're going to enjoy yourselves. I was talking to some of the reps at the Plowing Match in Minto, and they're well along the way for organizing. And I like to give people directions when I tell them to go to Northern Ontario so to get to the plowing match in uh, West Nipissing, you have two ways. When you go to Barrie, you can go up 11 and turn left at North Bay, or you can go up 400 and turn right on Highway 64, and either way, you will get, get there. there. And finally, I would like to thank my colleague, Mike Manta, because this year we camped out at the plowing match for, uh, actually Mike worked, I camped. But it was Mike's RV, and I'd really like to thank him. That's the only way to truly enjoy the work people put into a plowing match. Thank you, Thank you. Further member statements, the member from the Topical North. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to inform you and share with you an event that took place in my constituency. I have uh, sharing with you in the chamber some of the remarkable developments uh, that are going on in my own riding of Etobicoke North. I first of all like to salute uh, both current and past ministers of Transportation, Infrastructure Ontario. As you will know, there is a multi-billion dollar project underway as we speak to build the light rail transport trains on the, on the Finch line, Finch LRT. I estimate that probably a billion two of that is actually coming directly to my own riding. And I have to share with you, Speaker, I'm not going to show you the maps because I know we're not allowed to use props, but it's a magnificent transformation, modernization, uplift and upgrade to my riding and to the transportation hub. For example, the Finch LRT will actually have eight stops, counted eight within my own riding, starting from Humber College for our students, Westmore, Martin Grove, Albion Road, Stevenson, Kipling, Islington, and just at the border at uh, Western Road. This promises Speaker to not only, as I say, modernize our transportation, but it's an extraordinary boost to my riding, to the people, for their transport, and ultimately for their prosperity. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. Now time for reports by committees. <laughs> 